Ladies, gentlemen and students, welcome to Oberon High School's 2021 information session. My name is Joshua Baker, I'm the assistant principal here at Oberon High School. Uh, this year we're having to do things a little differently. Normally we love to get our students to talk to you, our parents to talk to you, and for you to get a feel of what it is to be an Oberon High School student. Unfortunately, this year we're having to do things a little differently, and that's uh, with obvious reasons, but hopefully the information that we provide today gives you a good insight into what's on offer here at the school. I'd like to begin with an acknowledgement to country and our school sits on beautiful forest and coastal country, the traditional home of the Wadawurrung people. Today we recognise their long history on this land and the care they gave to it. We remember that our community learns, grows and grows on traditional Wadawurrung country and we pay our respects to Wadawurrung elders past, present and future. At this point I'd like to hand over to our school principal Mr Tim McMahon. He's going to step you through a whole range of details showing why we are a great school and why your child would excel here. Also giving you um, the developments on the brand new school at Armstrong Creek as we move forward uh, looking at a 2021 start. I'll be back in contact at the end of this to discuss where to from here and how you go about enrolling your students. Hope you enjoy the presentation. Thanks Josh and I'd also like to welcome prospective students, parents and guardians to the Oberon High School website and our open night presentation. As Josh said, my name's Tim McMahon, I'm principal of Oberon High School and have been for the last eight years. Unfortunately, due to the current coronavirus pandemic, many schools, including ours, were, run, were unable to run traditional open nights. To allow you to gain a greater understanding into our school, we've put the following presentation together. And if there are questions that you need answered after watching this presentation, then you'll be able to log on to these and we will respond. As the school principal of a public school, school and being a believer in the quality of, of public education, I'm very proud of Oberon High School and the education that it provides to students that attend the school. So research has clearly demonstrated that successful schools prioritise quality teaching and learning. At Oberon High School, quality teaching and learning is our core business, supported by our commitment to our moral purpose of ongoing school improvement, which thereby ensures that we'll continue achieving outstanding outcomes academically and supporting the social and emotional development of students who attend. The school has a mantra, which is shape your future, go one better. And it's based on the premise that our students will make the most of the extensive opportunities that Oberon offers, both within the classroom and outside. Our teachers prioritise the following within the classroom, getting the best out of every student, accelerating the learning of all students, ensuring that every child succeeds and eliminating the gap between potential and achievement. Our implementation of that moral purpose is reflected in this slide. As depicted in the slide, we expect all of our students to be challenged in their work, no matter what their academic ability level. However, the work pitched at students shouldn't be that, that difficult that it's impossible for them to achieve. Nor should it be so easy that they become bored with, with the challenge that's given them. So, the challenge for our staff, which they've worked extensively around, is to make sure that every child is challenged within their learning. So as well as the focus on academia, the school values and offers a wide range of extracurricular opportunities to, to the students to enhance their learning and also socialisation with other students. This includes camps, overseas cultural experiences, sports, school productions, public speaking, and leadership development opportunities. And these opportunities are available to all students. I'll now talk you through a number of data sets that will give you an overview of Oberon's performance against other state government secondary schools, both in 2019, but also over the past few years. And the graphs that are depicted in the first lot of slides that I show you will give you an indication as to whether the school is in the top 20% of schools, the blue, the middle 
60% of schools with the, the green diamond there being the state mean or the bottom 20% of schools as indicated by the bottom blue line there. So the first slide that I'm showing there you is the parent satisfaction survey or parent opinion survey. And each year the parents rate the school through this survey around a range of factors in, including quality of teaching and learning and other indicators. And what we can see from the result here is that the, the parent perspective is putting Oberon in the top 20% of schools. The next one that I'm going to show you is the school staff survey. And again, looking at the same criteria of top 20%, middle 60% and bottom 20%. And you can see there that Oberon is functioning up in the top 20% and closer to the top 10% of schools that are within there. The next slides are from the students and they relate to a sense of connectedness in the school. And the second slide that I'll show you is around management of bullying. So what we can see here is our results for 2019. The school was up near the top 20, up near the top 20th percentile, but still in the in the in the top of the 60th percentile. And the, and it also gives us the three year average, which has us sitting in the same point. The next one around bullying indicates that again, we are above the state mean um, and then the top of that top 60th percentile. While I don't have any VCE results in play, the VCE results for 2019 were once again very pleasing and placed us well above the state mean. The state mean for secondary schools being 28. Our all school um, state median for that was um, 29 for 2019. The next results that I'm showing you um, are trend analysis of NAPLAN results over a number of years. It actually goes back to six years. So it goes back and shows six different groups or cohorts of students. And it looks at the growth that has occurred in their results over a two year period. So it, it looks at their results from what they achieved in year seven to what they achieved in year nine. And so what we can see here for our reading results, and Oberon is the blue line, is that on every year we are performing above similar schools, and in most cases well above similar schools and above all schools. Um, and so that has continued as an ongoing trend over the last six years in reading. The next one, again, is a trend analysis and reflects the writing that results that have been achieved at the school. And at three out of the last four years, the school has performed both above similar schools and above all schools, um, except for this one year 2016 to 2018, when we were slightly lower than both of those. We identified writing as an area of concern back in 2013, and we have implemented a whole school writing approach, which has seen our results improve significantly in terms of the growth that our students are achieving in NAPLAN results. The final graph around NAPLAN is in regards to numeracy, and we can see from our numeracy results, once again, three out of the last four years, we are performing better than both similar schools and all schools in the results that are being achieved, with one year being slightly below. So clearly excellent results academically um, and something that we're very proud of. The Department of Education um, each year puts out what they call a school performance report. And this school performance report is actually a rating system in terms of how they rate schools. In 2019, Oberon was identified as a school of influence. And this is based on a number of the data sets that I have just shown you previously. Um, 
So that is the top ranking of any of the indicators within this report. So we're often questioned on how we achieve excellent academic results on such a consistent basis. And I've had many groups, schools, and some members of the community wanting me to articulate one thing. However, a key pillar of our school is that we have a highly collaborative teaching team and support team who have outstanding teaching and learning practices. And they are experienced, dedicated, enthusiastic, and recognize and have an expectation that class time is learning time and they continue to reinforce this expectation with their students. We also have an expectation that is articulated articulated to all our students that no matter what their ac academic ability levels, learning is about growth and we expect all our students to grow by at least the expected yearly rate in terms of their skills, knowledge and understanding. And the roles of each of our, our groups in our community in the learning process is reflected in the Oberon Way document that I'm showing you there. So in order to maximise student learning outcomes and to have a clear focus on continually improving teaching and learning, over the past eight years, staff at Oberon have developed and implemented a learning framework called the Oberon Good Lesson. And this has allowed teachers to have a consistent and common approach to their teaching and learning that incorporates elements that have been researched to make significant difference to student learning outcomes. We continually monitor our students at various ability levels by having what we call a target three approach, whereby teachers monitor one stu student in every class, one who is above the expected level, one at the expected level, and one below the expected level. And this allows the teachers to monitor and reflect on whether the task they are setting with students is achieving the goal of challenging all ability level students within their classes. As de depicted in previous data sets, this is something that we have achieved on a regular basis. And as part of our open night presentation, we would normally hear from a parent perspective. Unfortunately, this wasn't possible this year. However, I currently have the last of my sons attending Oberon High School. The other boys finished in 2017 and in 2015. And I chose Oberon as I know they will be taught by experienced, dedicated and student-centred teachers ensuring a high quality education in not only their, their academic pursuits, but also in, in terms of their social and emotional development. As a parent, I want my children to achieve academic excellence, access a wide variety of extracurricular opportunities, be in an, in an environment where success is expected and acknowledged, and have the opportunity to access leadership development and enjoy positive working relationships between staff and students. And all of this is found at Oberon. As most people would be aware, the Andrews State Labor Government have committed to building the Oberon High School at Armstrong Creek for our relocation for the start of the 2021 school year. The decision to relocate the school to Armstrong Creek will allow the positive learning culture to continue in a new location. Work began on this new school in July last year, 2019, and the construction is progressing well ahead of schedule in 2020. Approximately 38 million has been committed to the new Oberon High School at Armstrong Creek. The location of this school will be 10 minutes to the south of our current location in the Warralili Estate just off Bowen Heads Road. The frontage of the school will be on Batten Road, the newly constructed school will include state-of-the-art facilities with permanent buildings having a capacity of 1,100 students. Facilities that all students should have access to, no matter what system of schooling they attend, nor their socioeconomic background. So what I'll show you now, that is a, a depiction of what the school will look like from the Batten Road entry. We'll now have a look at some of the, the different facilities and I'll outline these facilities to you on the new site. So the school is broken up into a number of different buildings. So the first building that we have here is the, the Technology, Art and Science building. 
Um, the next building that is over here is what we call a learning community, which is like general purpose classrooms. That is a small learning community. And then we have two bigger general purpose classroom wings or learning communities in this section here. The admin is the next building. It includes a library as part of that admin and it fronts, as I said, onto Batten Road. And then down the bottom, we're lucky enough to, to have our double gym together with our food technology area and performing arts area. We also have some hard courts and an oval on the bottom. Again, the oversight of the school. So as we said, this an aerial shot of the school with the different buildings inside there. The other buildings that you see over here are the current uh, Armstrong Creek School, which is adjacent to our property. Then we've got some of the buildings. So when I talked about the learning communities or the general purpose classrooms, this is one of the bigger learning communities that, that is shown here. And then it locks onto a second learning community on the side. This is the, the smaller learning community being built there. Inside the double gym, as we currently see it, this is the inside of a learning community. So you can see the classrooms that are being set up or the learning spaces as they call it together with the, the more open areas through the middle. So due to our relocation um, to Armstrong Creek for the start of the 2021 school year, the desig des designated neighbourhood area or a DNA or school zone as they're often referred to, will be changing for the 2021 school year. So our current zone is up in here, outlined by the black lines. That's the current over on site. But for the following year, for the start of the 2021 school year, this will become our zone or designated neighbourhood area down in here. Um, as a result of this zone change, and also because of the increasing enrolments and associated capacity concerns, this may impact on guaranteed enrol enrolment at Oberon High School, possibly for the 2021 school year, but also in future years. So what I've included is for people that are interested, you can see the zone as it currently will be for the 2021 school year, but you can also see the priority order of placement that is put out by the Department of Education. And this is on their, um, on their website. So, and what it outlines is that in, in circumstances when a school may not be able to accept all applications due to who existing or future capacity concerns, and as obviously relates to future capacity concerns, school must manage enrolment applications in accordance with the following priority order of placement. For, so for students for whom the school is the designated neighbourhood school, so is in the zone, they are guaranteed of a space, of a place. The second priority is for students with a sibling at the same, who come from the same permanent address who are attending the school at the same time. So if you currently have a, have a brother or a sister enrolled at Oberon, moving to Armstrong Creek, they are second priority. Where the regional director has restricted the enrolment, students who reside nearest the school beyond our zone are the next priority. After that, it is students seeking enrolment on specific curriculum grounds, and then it is all other students in order of closeness of their home to the school. So to find what is your, your neighbourhood school, you can go on the findmyschool.vic.gov gov.au website. My understanding is that will be live from the start of term two, um, so from April the 14th, um, and people would be able to go on and see it there. So Josh, in a minute, we'll talk about to where to from here, but my concluding comments are, I encourage you to consider Oberon for your son or daughter's uh, secondary education. If you do choose the school, you will not be disappointed with your decision. And hopefully normal schooling will be available in the near future for us all, rather than the, the remote learning that we're currently looking at doing or currently doing. And if we get back to the normal schooling scenario, we'll be looking to run tours for any 
parents and students that are interested and you'll be able to contact the school in regards to that. Okay, so thank you everybody. Um, if you have any questions, don't forget to put them online and I'll now pass over to Josh. Thanks Tim and thanks for stepping us through all of those things and just know that we're lucky to have a great school with great students. So um, hopefully in the near future, you can get to come and have a look at what's going on. So we know that it's a really complicated complicated decision making for parents. So I just want to step you through, if it's your first time with a child in grade six, I just want to step you through what happens from here. So obviously in light of where we're at at the moment, there may be some slight um, differences between primary schools, but in essence, it will still look like this. At the start of term two, you will receive what is called a preference form from your primary school. Now that either may be mailed out or maybe done over an electronic copy with, um, in light of where, where we are at the moment. And that form needs to be handed back into your school by the middle of May. Dates will come out with that form. Uh, students, if you've got the Oberon as the first preference, obviously at that point, that form then comes to us. We then work through a process with all the other schools in Geelong and we uh, send out our confirmation in August. We know that that's quite a long way down the track and uh, it's frustrating for parents, but we are not allowed to make contact with people until early August in regards to that enrolment. And then all of that kicks off from there. So just know the whole process is ran through your primary school, but obviously we're happy to help at any point if you'd like to contact us. Sitting beside that, we have our enhancement program and our scholarships. So if you're looking at an enrolment, if you're interested in our enhancement program and I can direct you at this point to there is another presentation for our enhancement program up on our website. So if you go into the enhancement page through the links, you'll see that there is a presentation from the leader of our enhancement program, Mr. Greg Burgess, who's got all the information with the key dates. So applications for that are also online and also applications for the scholarship program, which are listed in the five areas of academic, leadership, community, sporting and the arts can all be found online. They are due on the Thursday, the 3rd of April. So they sit outside of the normal preference form that you will do through your primary school. From there, we will be in contact in regards to the process. Now, normally we get to sit and meet with everyone and there's some academic testing that we do, but in light of the current situation, things will change and we'll communicate that to all people uh, in regards to who have applied. Finally, I just want to make it really clear that we are available uh, for contact. So my email is placed there on the screen for you to see. And also our school phone during normal school hours will be redirected to one of our office ladies. At that point, uh, they will um, contact us, give us your number and we will give you a call if that's appropriate. Or just as simply, you can email us and we'll get back in contact with you to hopefully answer any questions that we can. I'd just like to finally finish off with really saying a massive thank you. Uh, I hope you enjoyed the presentation and it's explained a couple of the things. Obviously, we would much prefer to be showing you around our school, uh, but in light of where we are, we think this information might help you make your decision. And just know if you choose Oberon, you really are choosing a great school for your child. So thank you very much. And just wanna wish everyone all the best with their, uh, with their decision making, but also just wishing everyone all the best under the current circumstances as well. Thank you very much.